So we are now in Austria, we just crossed the border at Fussen and it was just a lovely smooth border. There was a patrol, she just said are we on vacation, and we said yes, and she just passed us through, no other checks or anything. Mm -hmm. First things first though in Austria is we went to pick up one of these, and this is a vignette which you've got to have on your windscreen to allow you to drive on the a, uh, the motorways and some other roads. So it's not everywhere, it's just some roads we will be going on. You can get 10 day, two month and one year passes. It's cheaper to buy two 10 day ones, obviously 10 days later, than it is to buy a two month one. So make sure you get one of those. But it activates the moment you buy it, that's right, isn't yeah. it? It like dates the moment you buy it. So She stamps it, so it says June 24th there. And where can you buy these stickers, Jake? You can buy them in Germany and Austria, anywhere near the border, um, or probably any gas petrol station in uh, Austria. And you just asked for a vignette sticker, that's a right. A vignette sticker, yeah. So that so this is our first stop in Austria, it's called the High Line 179. To park here it costs 4 euros, if you want to walk on the bridge it costs 8 euros, and if you want to take the lift up to the bridge it costs another 7 euros, which we're going to do today because we're feeling quite lazy. But it already looks really cool, not too busy. Parking was a bit manic, there's a warden who tells you where to park, but we had to park in parking zone 3 because we are a camper van. If you're not feeling quite as lazy as us, you can just walk up, which only takes 20 minutes apparently. So the cable car was quite enjoyable. It only took like two minutes or something. The lady reckoned it would take 20 minutes to walk up, but I think it would take me longer because I get out of breath quite quickly because of my asthma. But yeah, I recommend the cable car, but it was just like a lift, like lift doors and you get up and it's like a lift. It's not really like a cable car, but we're about to go on the bridge and I'm really excited. The total length of it is 406 meters and the height at the middle is a uh, pretty high 114 meters which doesn't sound very much but when you've only got a bit of a grid below you whoo, you can definitely feel it's high i don't know if you can see but it's really quite wobbly actually and we just witnessed the lady have to turn back because she was too scared it's a lot more i thought it was going to be more stable than this but really when someone walks past it proper wobbles uh, so if you're scared of heights then this would be a good challenge for you because it's not really scary but kind of scary enough to put you out of your comfort zone. In the middle it is really quite wobbly and you really feel the height of it. I thought I was fine with heights, normally I am, but with this wobbliness, wobbliness so almost like it's not dangerous at all over there there's now a fence because we're over the road but I feel like if you fell off from over there you'd still probably not make it <laughs> so there's a fence here just in case you fall on the road when I was walking I was looking down and I felt a bit woozy maybe I'm a bit more afraid of heights than I realise <laughs> maybe I'm a bit less afraid of heights than I realise heights this could be what puts you out of your fear this could be the thing that you do that makes it all better I recommend it but this isn't the only thing you can do in the area right next to the bridge there's a castle ruin to explore <laughs> so while you're here make sure you come to this lovely little castle ruins as well because the views around it are also lovely and it's free to get into so if you wanted to you could skip the high line just come straight up here but don't do that definitely go on the bridge it was 100% worth it now it's time to head back down to the van to visit our next spot Plansy. this lake is a perfect swimming spot surrounded by mountains with clear blue water but i don't know if you heard that I don't know if you heard that, but that's thunder in the distance. It's definitely going to start raining in a minute. So basically for the week, it looks really rainy and thundery all week, apart from tomorrow, which is sunny. So we've kind of had to prioritise what we want to do tomorrow. But if we're feeling brave enough, we might go for a dip in the water, in the rain, in the freezing cold. The rain continued and we headed to a quiet spot to hide from the weather, hoping to have better luck tomorrow. The next day, Plan C looked like a completely different place. It looked exactly how it looked in the beautiful pictures we'd seen. I imagine this place is rarely quiet, so I recommend arriving early in the morning to get it all to yourself. Everything is more magical this way.
Good morning and welcome to day two of Austria. Now today we have come back to Lake Plans. Yeah, we really, really, really wanted to see this place in all its glory because yesterday obviously it was pouring down with rain and we couldn't really see how blue the water was or anything because it was just chucking it down. So we went to a campsite last night, which was meant to be 10 euros, but he ended up charging us like way more for some reason. It was 10 um, euros for parking, two euros <laughs> each for our usual sanitary, it's like the bathroom area, and then three euros each for tourist tax in Austria. I, mean, I don't think it should have been three euros each. I think it should have been like a percentage, a smaller yeah. percentage of it. But anyway, we just sucked it up and paid it. And now we're here and it is absolutely beautiful. The water is so clear and so incredibly green, blue, turquoise. Mm. We're going to have a day, the day here, just enjoy it, swim, yeah. jump off the bridge, enjoy and soak up the sun. <laughs> There's a road that goes all the way along one end of it, but a little bridge you can cross to come to the other side, which is much more quiet. And we found a nice little part of the beach to ourselves. And where we parked actually was just before the bridge, um, and it's free on that little stretch. But we arrived at about half seven, half seven, yeah, half seven. And by like eight o'clock, half eight, it was full. So we're glad we woke up at six o'clock yeah. in the morning, aren't we now? We are. We're going to continue doing that so we can enjoy places with quieter, less people. Yeah. But I mean, just look at this view. The water is so nice. Like it's it's perfectly clear, and and it just gets deep really quickly. So this lake is cold. Go on, it also just, gets very deep, very quick. Just run, run and jump. Woo. Woo. <laughs> Oh my god, it hurts so much. Ouch. So, the water here is very cold, as you've seen. Jake went for a swim. I tried to go for a swim, but it's a little bit too cold for me, and it's not like a really hot day, so I'd struggle to warm up. But I did go for a wild swim the other day, didn't I, Jake? Yep. Just so you all know that I did do it, <laughs> just not today. Surprisingly, Jake was the only one jumping off the bridge, but we did hear that in the summer this is the thing to do. After a couple of jumps, we left Plan C behind to make our way to the next spot. Definitely, definitely recommend going to that lake because it was fantastic. The colour of the water, the clarity, just beautiful. <laughs> Good morning everyone! Today we are in Innsbruck and we managed to park in the city centre. Um, I'm just going to go have a look and see what the city's like. We're very excited and one of the things I'm most excited about today is hopefully finding a little vegan food place. <laughs> that would be really really nice wouldn't it? So we'll see if we go find one of them. So this is where we slept. Nice view of the mountains. We're not really used to sleeping in like city centres but it wasn't actually too noisy. There's some trucks along like blocking us from the road if you know what I mean so we didn't get many beeps because uh, nobody could really see us from the road because the truck drivers are allowed to sleep here so it's actually fine and it's paid parking in the week but free on the weekend and we are here on a Sunday so free parking baby so today is Sunday which means and most of the shops are closed um, but the restaurants and stuff are still open so if you do like shopping then come on a weekday but we don't really care about shopping so we're just going to walk around and enjoy the fact that it's quite quiet so usually we don't um, go to like a cafe and have a drink because we just us quite obsessed with saving money all the time. We're not obsessed with it, we just don't spend money pretty much. But we're here and we are actually waiting for one of the vegan restaurants to open and we ran out of things to do so we're having a drink here. And do you feel local? No, I feel like a tourist. <laughs> <laughs> We said we'd have at least one meal out in each country we visit, so here we are at this fully vegan restaurant, ready to stuff our faces. 
takes me right back to the good old days. So just to let you know, the way to Jake's heart is the food. The food. And also, if you didn't know, Austria has a 10% vegetarian population and about 1.5 is vegan. But this is basically fully vegan, it's called the Green Flamingo and this is the Flamingo Burrito. And it smells heavenly. Have a bite, let's watch you eat. Oh! They're good. Packed full of flavour. These chips are so good. I'm so excited to eat that. What me and Jake do? Sometimes we choose a thing off the menu each and then we'll have half each so we get to try half so I've got to cut this in half and then I get half of Jake's burrito. So remember just a few minutes ago when I said that car park was free, it turns out it's not free and uh, when we just came back from the restaurant we had a little chill in the van and we saw someone writing a number plate down so I jumped outside and I was like, what's up? He said, he's giving me a ticket because it's not free. Um, even though the sign, the machine, said it was free on Saturdays and Sundays. So I was like, oh okay. Okay, sure. Very confused. Beth done some research though, luckily it's only going to be a 25 euro fee. Um, but still a bummer, we could have used that on a campsite. But I still can't work out why we got a ticket. Because it's supposed to be free and then some other man gave us his ticket for the rest of the day. I asked him, isn't it free? He said, oh, it's only until April. But the, uh, another thing weird about it though is that the it was just all electronic. So we don't know we got a ticket until I guess it comes to Beth's address where the car van is registered. Well, my parents' address. So, Mum and Dad, if you get a letter um, with my name on it, it's probably a parking ticket. Yeah. <laughs> and so, my Mum and Dad are quite good at sorting out our, uh, what we call it, admin. Our admin. Because um, in France we got one and it was, a, it was a speeding ticket, wasn't it, Jake? Jake was speeding, yeah. so Mum and Dad sent us a picture of it so that we could pay it. So that's a bit of a bummer, a bit of a downer on our visit to Innsbruck. But I'm not feeling bummed by no, it. No, but I know, but it's like we could have spent that on a campsite. And uh, so we've got the ticket now, so we're going to stay for the rest of the day. Tomorrow yeah. we're going to have fun, we're going on to an alpine slide, we can't wait for that. Mm. And right now Beth is making us a little treat to to make us feel better. What are you I'm making? I'm making a smoothie, a frozen smoothie bowl, these frozen bananas which are really quite brown. Oh yeah. So it's going to be a nice, nice one. So if you blend frozen bananas and mix we'll it... We'll show you, we'll show yeah, you. Yeah, no, but I'm saying, if you blend frozen bananas and you mix it with anything else, like even if you want berries, make it even more sorbet-ish, we're going to blend it with coconut powder, cocoa powder, and uh, mix it like a chocolate and ice cream. Call really it nice cream. That's a lot of banana. Oh, it's Give it a go, get some bananas, make sure they're ripe, like spotty brown. Freeze, try cut them up, then freeze them and then blend them. With a bit of just regular normal cocoa powder. This one is from Tesco, not an advert, not sponsored, hashtag not sponsored. And then you get, mix it together and then you get a delicious, healthy ice cream alternative. Banana ice cream. 10 out of 10. So there's a weather warning today, it says it's going to be really hot, but luckily it's a little bit windy today, so hopefully we won't get too hot up there. The actual, we're doing the, um, what's it called, the alpine slide, um, which we're really excited about. Jake's been wanting to do it for ages, um, so we're going to, we paid for two goes, we're going to go in the cable car, come down, go back up, come down again, and we're really excited, we're going to show you what it's like. Uh, we've seen much video of this place. So we're so keen to give it a go. Oh, and you can actually see the, the luge, the slide here. There's little bars. And I was just looking that you go through some kind of little tunnel there. It looked really steep and Jake told me you have to control the brake yourself. That makes me a bit nervous. I can drive and everything, obviously. I just, uh, just makes me a bit more nervous knowing that I've actually got a responsibility. <laughs> The surroundings are absolutely beautiful and even if you don't fancy a ride on the Alpine Slide it's definitely still worth coming up here for the views and the walks that you can do in this area. So we've made it to the top of the cable car area and wow this uh, scenery is absolutely incredible. Beth's getting a little bit nervy having seen the, the run all the way down. It's quite steep and I, I don't really have a need for speed, like that's not something I have but yeah we'll see how it goes.
This was so worth the money and I really recommend this exact one. Some of the alpine slides are short but this one seemed to go on forever which was amazing. <laughs> So we just made it back down from the uh, alpine slide and we're so happy we bought two tickets because it was incredible yeah. fun. I don't think I would have been satisfied going down one time because I was a bit on like, I was a bit nervous thinking I was going to fall off but now I've done it once I can go down a bit faster next time. It was so good. You don't realise how steep it gets and then basically you have to push forward to go to like release the clamp and then push back to clamp and break. Yeah. Oh, you can get some real speed. It's, so, it's yeah. so steep. Some parts are vertical and you're just like... That was so much fun and honestly if you're gonna go you need to get at least two rides down it is more expensive obviously yeah. but and a third ride only like six euros more than two so so maybe we should have done three but <laughs> <laughs> do you know what the first time I was a bit more nervous and the second time I just didn't put my brakes on I just went let's just slow down slightly around the corners and it took Jake ages to catch up with me it did um, it was really good. So, so much fun. Def if you're in anywhere near Innsbruck, highly, highly recommend coming to check this spot out. So we have, well we've not just woken up, but we've been hanging around this morning getting some stuff done. We have been sleeping tonight in a truck stop and it had a few surprises, didn't it Jake? First of all, Jake was wandering around and we didn't think we were going to be able to have a shower tonight, but it did have a shower and we thought we didn't have a one euro coin, but we actually did in the end, so we had a shower, which was really, really nice. Jake, show them the view. Show them our beautiful view. Wow. So it's a motorway rest stop area, yeah. which means we got to sleep with the beautiful sound of the humming cars. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. But even like in Austria, even like a truck stop, there are still mountains surrounding us. So like, yeah. you wake up in the morning and you don't think, oh, I've woken up in a really ugly place because it's still just surrounded by mountains, yeah. aren't we? So if you're on a budget and you don't want to spend money on campsites, then you can always use rest areas here. You're not gonna have the nicest sleep or the nicest scenery, scenery around you, but, but it's still not that makes bad. it doable. So we've just parked up, as you can see, our van right here. Uh, it was quite a big car park. It's not very busy at all. Um, it is three pound for three hours, so we said. That's right. And this is a spot that we found using the Google Maps attractions thing, rather than reading about it on a blog or, yeah. or word of mouth. Which is my, I, Jake, Jake is good at reading blogs and doing all that research. And I quite like just looking on Google Maps and looking at the attractions. I don't know why, I like to read all the reviews and stuff like that. Um, so this is one of them. What's the name of it? Kaiser Clam. <laughs> Oh, this is certainly off to a good start. It's so cool. So you take a pathway along the rock edge. You really are in the gorge and it's so green. Now at the end then, that was such a cool little walk. The, uh, it didn't take very long at all really, 20 minutes probably to get from one side to the other. But the whole way there, just such incredible scenery where the water's been, where well, the cliffs have been eroded and the gorge has been made. Yeah, and it wasn't a difficult walk, it wasn't really any uphill, it was mostly flat. What do you reckon? I think it was very nice. It was a very, very short walk. So <laughs> don't come here thinking that you've got hours and hours that you could walk around because oh, you could actually continue the walk on through the foresty part. Um, but we just wanted to see like the gorge and stuff, didn't we? Yes, and there's loads of these clam gorge type things all over this area. We just chose that one because it looked interesting. Happened to be a free one as well, apart from the parking. Yeah. Some of them you do have to pay for, but I guess the structures are more built up, so it makes sense. Yeah.
Good morning everyone. So this morning we are on our way to a hike. We were going to drive all the way up but it turns out you're not allowed to take your camper vans up there. So we had to go to a campsite here and we're taking the bus up. Not sure how much it's going to cost yet but it's not that much. The campsite was 15 euros for the night however we got lucky and a boy gave us his night ticket because yeah. he was going. Yeah it was really nice. We parked up and um, a guy was like oh we'd, I'm leaving. Do you want my ticket? It lasts all night and so luckily we had that but we basically drove up last night to where like the gate is where they let you through and the lady said yeah well you can't take your van up there so we were like okay um so if you want to come just for the day the bus is at 8.32 from this spot and you can pay a five euro day ticket which lasts you for 9 p.m mm. um so now we're going up to about 2,000 meters 12 euros one way it's one way Some of the turns on this road look like they're too sharp for a bus, but they're not. Like this one. <laughs> look at the cliff face. Look at that view. So the bus up here was very uh, efficient. He was extremely well talented, that bus driver. He was quite fast. He was going up the road quite fast. So we've made it to the reservoir and now we're going to take uh, track trail number 502 which is the more direct route straight to the hut and to the famous people in which we're visiting today. Yep. So one and a half hours is supposed to take. This one, the blue one, 502, is the quickest route. There are all these other routes but we're going to do that. You can see we're just going to cut straight across yeah so the bit where the bus got us to is higher up than any mountains in the uk so i don't know if you've been following us on here for a while but we climbed snowden um not too long ago and where the bus dropped us off is smaller than snowden so yeah taller than snowden taller than snowden sorry yeah, snowden is smaller than where the bus dropped us off not only is it taller it's pretty much double because it's about 2,000 meters here and Snowden only goes to 1,090. This is honestly ridiculous how scenic it is. I mean, God, just this whole place and the colour of the water is incredible. Yeah, it's very nice. I just hope it's not too cloudy when we get up to the top. So we've been at it for an hour now. We've only got 200 metres left, so we've done 400 metres. It's raining now and I just really don't want to rain when we get up there so we actually can't just enjoy it. Otherwise I'm not doing this walk again, that's it, I'm not doing it again. <laughs> there you go guys, she's not doing it again. So up there is the first glimpse of the hut which making it if we're trying to get through. So not much further Beth, not much further. So we're a few minutes away from the hut and seven minutes behind schedule on the one and a half hour thing so that's not too bad. Check out that view. What do you reckon? It's nice, I just want to get to the top. Yeah, we're desperate to get to this blooming Instagram bridge. <laughs> It's definitely worth, worth the hike up, even though halfway through the hike I got a bit grumpy because it was raining and I just couldn't be bothered anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's worth it when you go up here because it is actually really nice. And we've liked out with the weather today. And yeah. because of the weather being risky, like, looking like it wasn't really bad, maybe it's quieter than it normally is. Yeah. The clouds are starting to roll in, which is really nice to see. Okay, so we just made it back down to the car park where we were camping. So if we didn't get that ticket from that boy yesterday, it would have cost us 15 pound, 15 euros, sorry, to camp. 
and then five euros for the parking of the day. It's a 24 hour ticket, so depending on when you get it. And then it costed us 12 euros to get up on the bus together for the two of us, eight euros for the ticket, four euros for the toll, and then we had to pay the toll again on the bus coming back. So it was 12 euros and 12 euros. That's 24 euros just to get the bus up. So if you wanted to come here, basically, you'd be paying 15 euros for the night, plus five for the day, um, plus 12 for one person to go up on the bus. It'd be 44 euros just to do that walk. Christ. Yeah, it's expensive. But if you're in a car, obviously you don't have to take the bus. Yeah. And uh, and you obviously have to pay. So you, I don't know how much it is, but you don't, you pay the toll on in your car and then pay for the car park at the top. It only costs 14 euros if, you, if you're driving yourself up there. Oh, does it? Yeah. Oh, so it's cheaper to be in a car and not be in a van then. Yeah. But there was a little van up there. Um, it's just, yeah, but whatever. That's the rules of the rules, so. Still an incredible hike. Just wish it didn't cost so much. Yeah. I've got clean hair. On which to our next spot and we're finally leaving the Tyrol region which means wilderness parking camping is more lenient and allowed. Oh, because it's been a bit of a struggle here. As you can see, the winding mountain roads in Austria are breathtaking. This is the kind of driving I love because it just doesn't get boring. Our next stop is the famous Krimmel Waterfalls, one of the most visited attractions in Austria. Good morning, it's another day today and we were up by an early to try and find a decent parking spot but all the parking lots were closed with no, because there's only a personal operated payment. Yeah, there was just no human around to take up our, our payment so yeah. we couldn't go anywhere because we didn't want to leave the van without a ticket on it and get an expensive parking fine. But we actually managed to find one in the town for free. Yeah. So we parked there, it was a bit of a longer walk. Not that long though, it was only like 10 minutes yeah. or something. And now we're about to go into the waterfall area. Now this footpath is apparently a paid one. I think it's four euros per person. Um, and the ticket boobs right up there by the looks of it. Yes. So we're about to see Krimmel. I've made it. Maybe it's Krimler. I've been learning last night. So Krimler waterfalls. Krimler or Krimmel waterfalls. And so in the end, it wasn't four euros each. It was five euros each. And we got a map as well. Let's hope it's worth it. But we'll soon find out. So an interesting thing about this waterfall is that it's said to have healing powers because due to the spray and all the negative ions that it connects to, it's supposed to cure things like ailments and asthma. How's your asthma feel? I'm cured. <laughs> I took a big, I took a big inhale of the of the uh, spray. I went right up there and. Points. There's loads and loads of viewpoints that you can do all the way up the path. You don't even have to go to the top to get the best viewpoints. I reckon some of the best ones are probably down here. Um, but we'll carry on up and show you the rest of the viewpoints. So every time you go around a bend, you come to another part of the waterfall. It's not really one waterfall, it's more like a series of cascading waterfalls. Yeah, um, but obviously, yeah, all connected. Yeah. I don't know if it's technically one waterfall or... And it just, it's just, it's beautiful, it's amazing, and the water is so ferocious, there's yeah. so much of it. And I don't know if it's as ferocious all year round, but it has been raining a bit recently, but not that much. Well, apparently it's glacial fed, uh, glacial fed, and in the winter, you can see icicles rather than water. As far as we are going today, the next, the rest of the path just takes you above this last waterfall, and we're happy seeing it from the bottom. Yeah, but the whole walk was actually quite easy. We just walked really slow, and uh, here we are. Yeah. So we're going to go back down. Yeah. And then have a nice chill out. 
because next we are making our way to Italy. Italy. And that brings us to the end of the video. If you did enjoy it, please feel free to give us a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss our next video because we are currently in... Italy and it's already been so incredible. We can't wait to show you what we've been up to. So stick around and we'll see you next week.